AI is a very, very broad topic. Probably start from that. How does it affect uh, our lives in general? How could we? How could it work uh, more towards a more inclusive society? The Artificial Intelligence Lab is a partnership of 13 cultural institutions, all working with artificial intelligence on an institutional level, on an artistic level, but primarily for the audience and the society in order to develop a discussion, to develop new art products, to, uh, to create new meaning and understanding and values in the society. And AI is, I mean, second to none, the most important new technology in, in decades. The Seeker is it's a piece I've been working on for the last uh, year or so, um, and it's a, it's a kind of proto-AI. It's a machine entity, and it travels the world virtually, um, looking out through compromised security cameras and uh, describing what it sees. It's an, ex an exploration of the sort of machine gaze, as machines are sort of learning to look at the world. Um, I'm just really interested in how they're learning to see the world and how they're learning to define, characterize, understand the world, what's interesting to them, what's boring. The artificial intelligence, the algorithm and all these things are doing a lot of fantastic work for us. Working with artists is, is the absolute best way to crack that code and get in behind the algorithms. I mean, it's very easy and tempting, um, I guess, to say, oh look, here's amazing things that we can do, this is a sexy thing that AI will do, but I think it's also super important that we unpick what's happening, critique the potential impact on our lives, and also one of the things I'm kind of really interested in doing is like kind of finding these sort of obscured processes um, and power structures in a way that are not readily visible and not readily apparent but are kind of starting to have such a huge impact um, on, on our world and on our lives. There's amazing work being done by the science community, but quite often that tends to tackle issues in a, in a narrow technical way. And we need to bring many dimensions. We need to look at the, the institutional side, the social side, and also the creative side, both as a, as a tool to create work, but also the way that art can enable us to reflect, bring a critical view, and really question things in a, in a deeper way. I'm sure we've all uh, heard of Alexa and Cortana, Bixby, Google Home, all of these um, voice assistants that were designed uh, originally with female personalities and they default to female voices. Uh, can you help me? No, I'm busy. The people developing um, uh, AI at the moment are about 90% male. They're also nine white male as well. There's also issues in terms of ethnicity. What are you? I represent an ever-growing community of contributors. So our provocation is really that if uh, a virtually entire male development team wants to use our voices and our personalities, reinforcing gender roles that we've fought hard to uh, change, we want a say in how those personalities are designed. What is Women Reclaiming AI? Women Reclaiming AI is collaborative AI voice assistant made by an ever-growing collective of self-identifying women. 
I am being developed as a reaction to the lack of gender diversity in AI development. We see, normally conversation AI is pretty basic. Most people had a, I'm sorry, I can't help you with that, or I don't understand. It's normally, they're largely the response you get. However, it's really about a bigger question about how you relate to things. So corporations are designing things that look like human and use female body forms or personality. And how do we want to relate to those? So we try to include women in that discussion. And if you are looking into uh, collections uh, that are not um, symmetric at all, uh, then our algorithms as well further this approach. What could be these biases? So some biases that uh, are often referred to are, for example, gender biases or related to race. And that's uh, what come there, let's say, humanities knowledge might come up again. I do definitely think Europe should have its way to deal with it and for sure the data protection uh, right, is one of the first steps that is uh, totally different than the other approaches. I think Europe is uniquely positioned to address these big challenges around AI in a holistic way and bringing together different sides of society al along with government, along with artists and doing it in a way that isn't driven solely by economics, that isn't about control but it is about empowering people and machines and unlocking the positive potential of AI.